I guess from a public policy point of view, the thing we'd ideally like to do is to eliminate copyright and patent laws altogether. There's plenty of protection for inventors, and there's plenty of protection opportunities to make money for creators. It's not that we view that this should be some sort of charitable act that people are going to invent things and create things without earning money. But the evidence shows very strongly that there's lots of opportunities to make money without patents and copyrights. The question is, why do we use the word intellectual monopoly rather than the word intellectual property? And the reason for it is relatively simple. Intellectual property is actually a relatively recently coined term. And it's a term that was coined really for propaganda purposes, not because it has intrinsic meaning. So historically, we talk about copyrights, we talk about patents, maybe to a lesser extent about trademarks. But the word intellectual property is designed to give the impression that intellectual property share some of the beneficial effects of other kinds of property. So, for example, property in houses, property in automobiles. So we th should think, oh, property, that's a good thing, and therefore intellectual property is a good thing. But property refers really to the ownership of the original idea. And what intellectual is called intellectual property is really about controlling other people's use of the idea, which isn't, generally speaking, what property is about at all. It's really about monopolizing the idea and restricting the way in which other people could use the idea. The analogy is free trade. Right? If you go back to early 18th century, when the first strong proponent of free trade, free trade of goods, that thing that we all like uh, these days, right, uh, started coming out, everybody took them for absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts, right? The tradition was the mercantilist tradition. It, it was also the only thing that made sense. In order to make a country rich, and the population of the country rich, what you need to do is to get more stuff in and not let the stuff going out, where the stuff was gold at the time, or, or coins, or, or, you know, or uh, silver. And so what you want to do, you want to be able to export and sell your thing all around the world, but don't let the other guys sell things at home, right? So that was the whole idea, so trade barriers and so on and so forth. Now we understand, I don't have to explain why that was completely silly. That was, you know, it's not gold to make you rich. It's actually having the Ferrari or the beautiful villa or the, or the clothes or the TV, whatever. That makes you rich. The gold is just a tool to that. And we all understand that free trade is very good. But you understand, it took a century, basically, for these guys to break through the intellectual debate. So it's only at the end of the 18th century that it starts to become, among economists, a widely accepted proposition. Then it took another century to try a first experiment, the golden age at the end of the 19th century, the first globalization. Then we went backward big time right, with the recession of the depression and so on. And now everybody seems to believe it's a good idea, even if, again, this, this, this crisis is making people tremble. If you think of what patents do, it's the same thing. And, and so do copyright. They are things that prevent people from trading and imitating. The big risk of, of import export of free trade he said, I can come in into your country and imitate what you're doing and doing a little bit better, and you can come in into mine, imitate what I'm doing, and I'm doing a bit better. Think about the process of competition that taking away patent and copyright uh, induces. It's the same thing. It allows me to come into your business, look at what you're doing, say, huh, I know how to do that, and I'll do it a little bit better. So I'll compete with you, right? And you're in trouble. Now you have to improve yourself. It's the same thing. And so the question is, what do we do to get people to develop new ways of doing business and develop new products and, and build new creative things. And the answer is that the patent system, the copyright system is this day is a huge drag on the process of invention and creation. And if you want to get that jump started, the thing to do is to go take a look and try to get those laws to make sense so people can go back to doing what they're good at doing, and that's inventing things, creating things, imitating things, improving things.